Good evening, everybody. So nice to see a lot of friendly faces. Please leave your videos on if you um, if you like. It's so nice to talk to real people. Um, thank you for joining us on a cloudy and somewhat damp summer's evening. Thankfully, we have the nurturing and nourishing warmth and magic of Moxa to bring us together this evening. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. It's me who are very excited seeing all these people here. Thank you to come, and I hope you enjoy a little bit uh, this talk. Thank you, Philippe. Thank you, Philippe. Um, I am going to introduce you um, to everybody and introduce this evening. Um, for those of us, those of you that are new, welcome. Um, this session is brought to you by the Association of Acupuncture Clinicians, the AAC, and the Japanese uh, Acupuncture and Moxa Association, or JAMA. Uh, my name is Claire Ward, and my colleague Maxine Silk and I are your hosts this evening. I'm not sure if Maxine's here to give us a wave. Um, we are on the board of both of those acupuncture associations and one of the things that we've been doing along with Chris Davis is arranging training for acupuncturists that cannot easily, um, the type of training that acupuncturists cannot easily get in this country. So we are delighted tonight to be joined by Philippe Corday. Please mute yourselves everybody. Um, who is in Spain in his home country and he is in between uh, trips having taught moxa, uh, Japanese style moxa in Japan and he is very shortly off to Australia to teach his Japanese techniques there. So we are very um, lucky to have snapped him up for tonight's session. Um, Philippe is a true master of moxibustion and has dedicated many years to really deepening his understanding and uh, honing his skills of this wonderful herb with astoundingly quick and long lasting results in clinic. Whilst he continues to learn, as we all do, that's a thing that unites us all. We can't, yeah. we're acupuncturists, we cannot get enough of learning. Um, while he continues to learn, he is in high demand, traveling around the world to share his mastery and passing on his skills that he's learned and honed and developed from his own studies. Philippe will be here in person in the UK from September to deliver a nine day course um, to uh, provide a teach us real proficiency in refined moxibustion methods to enhance our results in clinic. Most of us have learned some moxa techniques in acupuncture school that was largely warming and largely supplementary or adjunctive to needles. But there is a true alchemy to using moxa in a much more advanced fashion. The style that Philippe teaches has a much wider depth and breadth to what we've learned in school. In fact, the methods are powerful enough to use a standalone or primary treatment methodology. In other words, his styles can be used instead of needles. I'm just gonna let that sit for a second as a thought. This involves a whole other dashboard of diagnostic information when you develop enhanced listening through your fingers and the art of palpation. We know that there is therapeutic benefit to touch when working with a patient and we must get our hands on our patient's bodies to treat exactly what we are feeling. And Philippe will teach us that. Most of us were barely taught palpation at school, but it is an extremely valuable tool to use throughout the treatment from diagnosis to completion. He will also teach us about the fascia network and how moxa can work to gently release swiftly resolving often chronic and difficult conditions. So tonight's session is a sneak preview into the seminars that Philippe will be teaching here in the UK in autumn. And uh, those sessions will, will be all about very refined moxa mastery skills. So with no further ado, uh, please sit back, make yourselves comfortable and enjoy learning a bit about the magic of moxa from Philippe Cordet. Philippe, over to you. 
No. Well, thank you very much for this beautiful presentation. And I think that I can I can I can explain better for the people uh, just one part of the story. Okay. Eh? Because maybe maybe the people can understand why I am here today. Uh, indeed, uh, I began my career as a cupuncturist. Um, uh, sure, like most of you, I have been doing for 23 years the exercise of the Oriental medicine. But I have to say that I began as a cupuncturist. And one day I felt in love with moxibustion. And I felt in love really because I was a clinician and I love it to take care of my patients and try to get solutions. Indeed, something that bothered me a lot was, was a lot of concepts that I received from the school and I didn't know how to manage. You know, it's very, very sure that a lot of people here today had to study about the chi. And well, you work with the chi and you do a lot of beautiful things with chi and amazing and surprising treatments with chi. But sure, for a lot, there is a kind of lack about the chi. What is that? No, what is that? It's supposed that I have to work with that, but I was not sure. I was not sure what was the chi. And for a long time, I suffered that. It was very disgusting for me and for my practice to, to, to didn't know how to manage the chi. And I have to say that just was with, uh, with some practice of the Japanese field, especially on the acupuncture field, that I, I found something that made me a, a kind of eureka inside my mind. Oh, maybe it's that, no? Indeed, I began to appreciate that maybe all that I listened about the chi was that a kind of not a sensation was something that happened, something to which which arrived to the treatment and was there, and was something very very subtle. Not I, I learned in the school in the in the first school I studied to do very strong techniques with the needle. I remember then all the time I suffered a lot when the patients complain a little bit about the chi sensation, no? Because I was not sure it was the chi. Then when I discovered the Japanese view of the chi, it was a surprise. Oh, I don't need to be strong or hard, or I don't need to do uh, very, very, very deep stimulation to get some effect. No? Then it, it changed a lot when I discovered the, when I was more close to the idea of the chi. And first was a kupuntur, the Japanese kupuntur, who helped me to that. And after was moxibustion. With moxibustion was love on the first seat. And I have to say why. Because you know, I tried on my clinic. At that moment, I didn't know too much. But in my story, I met someone who was able to explain me a little bit about the Japanese moxibustion ideas. Then I began to practice in my clinic, and my surprise was, wow, I can win time. Especially, you know, before my treatments, an average, if I have to calculate, an average of treatments for, for, for something easy like a, a tendonitis, for example. No, then, then before were five, six shots, you know. And when I began to practice moxa, huh, all changed. Then sometimes were only two shots. Sometimes one, sometimes three, but not more. You know, all, all happened very, very, very fast. And it was something that really, really touched me and was something that helped me to decide, okay, I need to know more about Moxie Bustin. After that, I have to say that, well, I began to trip, to, to travel to Japan, to the States, when I met my masters, my Japanese masters, and I decided to quit the needles. I left the needles completely on my practice. It is already 12 years ago, 12 years ago, more or less, 12 or 13 years ago. And I'm very happy for that, you know, because I continue having good results. Still, I have to say that I'm having more and faster results. And well, I decided to quit the needles, I said. I have to say to the people that you don't need to do that. In my case, was a decision. Was a decision because I was strongly interested, 
And really, I wanted to, to verify on my practice if it was possible to do only treatments with moxibustion. I was surprised when I discovered that uh, in Japan, during centuries, there were people only doing moxibustion. Then it gave me reasons. It gave me reasons because, you know, when something has been done for a long time with good results, it seems that something good is there. Then was a, a decision that changed completely my practice and my life. I respect a lot the needles and I understand the dimension of the needle. Indeed, I have to say that, that today I am talking about moxibustion. And if you came to, the, to my course, you will learn more about moxibustion. But you must think something if you are a acupuncturist. Really, to study moxibustion is something that can help you to be a better acupuncturist. Because really, you will understand the dimension of the fire, but also you will discover the dimension of the metal, of the needle. That sometimes we have ideas, but I think the best, the best stuff in life is experience. Then moxibustion is something that you must experience. I mean, this, uh, the, 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 the work in the intellectual sense is not, uh, is not, uh, you know, have, not, have not the same dimension as the acupuncture. I mean, things doesn't happen only in the mind, especially things happens on the hands. Then if you are this kind of people who love to touch, who love to feel, or you are someone who wants to experience a new opportunity in your life, to open your work, moxibustion can be a good stuff. Then I think that, that, that more than my words, I think that it's better that I show things, okay? I am talking about experience. Then let me share with you a little video. This is a kind of menu of moxa techniques and moxa possibilities, because sometimes moxa techniques are a number, but also the possibilities are bigger. Then let me show you a little resume, a little summary of what, what, we, can, what we can work together if you decide to come. Then please, can I share, Claire? Please do, I think you can, yes, Philippe. I can, okay. Ah, okay. Well, it seems that I cannot share. Okay, let's see. Let me share, please. Ah, okay. You're in? Yeah, I'm in. Then, okay, do you see this video? We can. Yeah, okay. This is a, let me explain to you, okay, what you will see. In this case, this is diary moxibustion, the first, in the Fukaya style with a bamboo that we use to reduce the feeling of burning. This is another application of diary moxibustion, okay? This is to, to treat worms and molluscum. It's very, very classical stuff. Look at this, another form. We use the incense. The incense is the, is the tool that we use to light moxibustion, especially diary moxibustion, that we can use this like a stick. We have all kinds of applications. Indeed, moxibustion can be done in all the body. It's only to understand what you can do and what you want to do. And now you are saying another very beautiful technique, call it ontake, okay? In this case, it's a super ontake that is longer than the regular one. And it's something very pleasant and very useful to grow the flow of chi on the structures, the flow of chi and the flow of blood too. Then it's very, very helpful this technique, combine it with diet moxa. In this case, you are seeing something that we call chinetsky, big cones, but not for burning. Don't be afraid. Take okay. care. This is an, also an application with protection, diet moxa with, with protection. If you don't like the idea of burn, then it's interesting to understand all levels of tonetsky. I mean, you can burn, you cannot burn, you can only do energetic stimulus. This is Daisaki. So this is moxibustion, and this is ginger moxibustion. You know, maybe already because it's very common the Chinese stuff. This is an idea for treating eczema or, for example, a heel spurs, very painful with not burns. This is a technique for 
this inflammation. And this is salt with moxa, very useful for supplement in cases of emptiness and weakness, okay? This is moxa box, this last, this last. Okay, uh, hope you have enjoyed a little bit this, this menu. This menu is only, or is only a reflex of possibilities that we have on moxibustion. Okay, then uh, there are that a lot. Usually in the schools, I've not, I've not explained it too much. Um, very common is that the schools itself, they don't know, they don't know about moxibustion. Moxibustion has been reduced in the forms that arrive to the, to the West. And mainly people, and it's very often, they think that moxibustin is only the cigar. Maybe the moxabox, or maybe the little moxaflosh on the, on the needle. Okay, it's like it's a kind of reduction. And indeed, the moxibustion is an universe. It's an universe in the same dimension as needles. You must think that, that we can do with moxa 95% that you can do with a needle. And also moxa can do something that needles cannot do, that is supplement. It means that you can add energy to the system. Okay. The, 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 the big difference when I say, oh, you can do the same, is that with needling, you can be very, very exact in the sense of, we use a needle, is like tuning. It's like tuning. You really are trying to, to arrive to an exit stimulus. And with moxibustion, it's stronger. I have to confess that. But also, I have to confess to you that if you develop skills, you can be very, very exact too. Then finally, it's not a problem. Okay, a lot of people have ideas about moxibustion. For example, that moxibustion is only for supplementing and not for, for dispersing. This is an error, a big, a big, a big error, because indeed, if you know direct moxibustion, all the direct moxibustion naturally is for dispersing. Then really you can disperse with moxa. You only need to know how to do it. Then it's only that. Okay. Then this is one a very, very common idea. Another very common idea is about burning. If we talk about direct moxibustion, no? Oh, but this technique that, that burns and people complain. Okay, okay, stops. People complain if you don't do right. I mean, if you are able to develop a good skill and well, when I, when I teach, I try that all the people learn this, this is very important. You can arrive to do a very, very tiny burn. We are talking about one millimeter. I'm talking, we are talking about something very, very little, very small, sorry. Okay. Then you are able to do that without not sensation for the patient. Then the patient will not complain. It's a question of technical, technical skill. It's only that. Then I, I, I always explain a little anecdote that when I, well, before, before new Japanese moxibustin as today I know, in my life, three persons appear who said to me, oh, Philippe, I can teach you uh, very, very cool stuff that is called moxibustin that Japanese do. And you will see that it's fantastic. Well, the three persons, one, I, I believe that the, the first only had seen, had seen the video. Another, I think that the, the second one, maybe he, he read the book. And the third, maybe he saw a demonstration of someone because none of three knew how to do. Indeed, the three, they tried to teach me that. And all the three times I saw, I thought, oh, this is a disaster. This is impossible that it is good for the people. You cannot heal people with that. I was, I was sure after that, you know? But what happened? When you, end, when, you found, when you find your master, when you find someone who know already the question, who already had found it, found all the problems about and found also the solutions, then you are in front of a master. 
and it changed completely. Maybe the people don't know in the room, and this is, I think, this is very interesting. Maybe you know the world, the world, sensei. It's a very Japanese and common word around the world, huh? especially if you see martial arts or you know the martial arts, sensei, okay? And, you know, very common, very commonly, the word sensei is translated as master, as teacher. No, the sensei is the teacher. But really, if we translate literally the word, we know a little bit more, we go more deep on the idea that is on the word sensei, it means the person who was born before you, who arrived before you to something. I mean, this is a try to explain that learning is a process. And finally, a master is someone who before had experienced frustration, have experienced mistakes, but at the same time had worked very hard to find solutions. And now is able to explain you. Then I say that because after these three persons, that they try it, and I understand that they try it. Okay, when I met my Japanese masters, all was very different. Because really, when you met someone who know where is the problem or how to solve, all change the dimension. And you must think that uh, a lot of the techniques on moxibustion uh, will ask you to develop new skills, especially because some techniques are very, very tiny. Then you need to learn how to work with your hands to do very, very tiny. I don't know if you can see, but my hands are very big. If we compare the, the, the Japanese size and mine are very different, okay? Then, well, this is possible. We can roll, we can arrive to the tiny, tiny cones. When I say tiny cones, I am talking about to work with cones of two millimeters of height. They are very, very tiny, like a sesame, like a sesame grain. Okay. Then today, I want to show you more things about moxa. Indeed, I came from a family of moxibustion, that is the Fukaya family. The master Fukaya was someone who was all the life worried about how to do effective moxibustion. And it can sound strange that someone came here to talk about effective moxibustion. But you must know that on the old times, moxibustion was something very, very hard. When I say very hard, I am talking about cauterization. I am talking about big burns. Then all this changed on the 20th century. You know, and indeed, the master Fukai was one of the ones who was there to give in ideas and work in new ideas to change and, and to get the same effect that classically they, get, they got, but with a new view. I always say that Master Fukaya, that was someone from the 20th century, was someone from the 21st century. Like, uh, he has a spirit of research. The man, he, he made his own researches with the clinical cases that he had. He took notes of all the cases and he tried all what the classical voices say about moxibustion and he found different ways to, to improve that. Also another thing that was very worrying for the master was to do a very, very pleasant moxibustion. You know, moxibustion has been used very classically in Japan for chronic disease. Yes, because really the focus, the big focus for especially direct moxibustion is the stagnation of chi and blood. Okay, then we had specialists of treat only the stagnation of chi and blood. But we have to say that we have stagnations of chi and blood in different levels. You have this in chronic disease, but you can get this also in the acute disease, okay? Then, then we can think that really, we can work only with this concept. Japanese love to reduce things, okay? Then sometimes uh, simplicity, when we see from the older world, sometimes we don't understand. We think, oh, this is very simple. It cannot, it cannot run. But really behind the simplicity, 
there are a lot of things, a lot of work done before to arrive to this. And this is one of the beauties of this work. Then let me share with you more things about the beauty of this work. Yeah. Then I share again. Okay. Okay. Mm -mm. Okay. Okay. And let me put this archi here. Okay. Then, well, this is the most basic concept on Japanese moxibustion, but also in the acupuncture, in the acupuncture is the idea of fullness and emptiness. And we reduce all to that. We treat for that. And we try to see the body in these aspects. You know that fullness and emptiness indeed is a natural stuff. It's a natural state for the body. The problem came when this state, it's stuck it. And you remain on the excess or you remain on the emptiness. This is the big problem. Okay, then we have in moxibustion techniques for the excess and for the emptiness. Then now, now I am thinking in you that you are a acupuncturist and you, I hope you use moxibustion. Then let me, let me explain you something that I think that it can improve your practice. It's very easy to understand, sure. And it's something that you can apply tomorrow morning, sure. Okay. Then is that. That what you see now on the screen, it's a, it's a diagram about findings that we can have with palpation, okay, then, and also that findings that can help us to correlate these findings with certain MOXA techniques, okay? The one and the two case is that we say something that happens on the surface. You know, in the Japanese field, we do a big difference between the surface and the depth. Okay. Then, if you know a little bit uh, any kind of Japanese acupuncture style, you will see that a very, very common way of doing it's only needling on the surface. We are talking about one millimeter, two millimeters, and also Japanese they use they have techniques of contact needling. Contact needling are tennis of acupuncture without not insertion, okay? Because they, they work with the idea that all the meridians on the channels are on the surface. And also we can work there and we can have effect inside. The most beautiful thing that nowadays we have explanation for that. And we know that we have a beautiful tissue that it's called fascia. Maybe you know that because nowadays we are talking about a lot. Fascia can explain perfectly that our actions on the surface are actions that will change things inside, for sure. Okay, and it can explain why inserting a needle of one millimeter, two millimeters only on the skin can help. In this case, we use a kind of tenet that's called Chinetsky. If you remember a little bit the video I show at the beginning, are the big cones, the big cones of of green air, okay, cones like this. I don't know if you can see now, okay. Cones of green air that well, we can use to disperse or to supplement on the surface. Then we can change, this is amazing technique because indeed at the origin was designed only for dispersion as a local treatment, but it's amazing how we can change the flow of a meridian in question of less than seconds, it's very quick. Okay, we can change the flow from meridian. I mean, to grow the flow or to decrease the flow. This is Chinetsky, very useful technique, especially if you do a acupuncture. It's something that you can combine better. Then the three, the four, and the five are on the depth. Okay, it's something that happened under the skin. And the three case is the most classical case, and maybe is the 
strongest idea in direct moxibustion. That is the idea of, I said before, a stagnation of chi and blood. A stagnation of chi and blood is something that happens on the fascia tissue. Fascia tissue is, is the, the perfect support, physical support, for create a place for stagnations. And then it's a mixture of fascia and the first layers of muscle, the blood, the liquids, uh, also the, the, all the intercell liquid. Okay, all is congested, can be congested when you have a disease. Indeed, we have a old master of the Edo period. Let's call it Goto Konsan. And this master developed a, a, beautiful, a beautiful law about the stagnation of chi. And he said something like, it doesn't matter what you have, what disease you suffer, that always you will suffer stagnation of the chi. And then when you have stagnation of the chi, immediately, the consequence can be stagnation of blood. And this is something very physical. It's something that you can touch. I mean, if we press the skin, if we press the skin and we go and try to go inside, we can be able to detect, to find this stagnation of chi and blood. Then after we can use that emulsion and we can break these stagnations, then we can recover the flow of chi and new blood to the zone, to the area, to the structure, to the organ. This is a beautiful work because we are talking about that is something that happens in the fascia. And I said before that, that fascia is not only, is not only the support, the physical support where things happen. It. Indeed, fascia is more. Fascia can, can transmit information. Fascia can create energy itself because fascia can be great. This is science, eh? this is uh, the ultimate researches that we have, eh? that is beautiful. Also, fascia and muscles make sounds. Fascia can control hormonal fluxes, aromatic flows. Then I think that we are talking on something that is very close that, to the old ideas that we have about the channels. Then it's something that very interesting to go deep inside because maybe we are in front of something that can, can explain us what we are doing with acupuncture or moxibustion. Then what happened? Moxibustion is very deep in this sense. We can go inside very deep. We can break these stagnations. Then really we have a very, very strong tool really to manage what means unblock the body in a lot of terms, okay? Then in the four of the five, that you see on the diagram, a little bit different, because this is uh, more evident that there is emptiness, but also in the fourth half, still stagnation. This is a very classical situation that a lot of humans, we suffer in a point that sure, you had to apply moxibustion, is the Remai, Remai 6, sure. You without your Remai 6, now you can do it, eh? now. Sure, you will feel that something is empty there. You can enter perfectly inside. Oh, it goes, it seems weak. Well, if you feel this, the most typical reaction is to take your cigar, a moxa cigar, maybe a moxa box, and put there for a while until the patient say, oh, now I am feeling the heat, it's better. Or maybe if you see that, if you see, if you touch and it is, it is warm, okay? But I have to say that if you do this, you do only half of the work. Why? Because if you go inside more with your finger, it's possible that you arrive to the stagnation that very often appear. Indeed, the emptiness is not free. You have not emptiness like a casual thing. For create emptiness, all the energy, all the mass that there are and that is not there must be in another place. Where? In the stagnation. Then this is only a, a recommendation. Go to the Remai 6, touch. If you feel that it's empty, go inside. And if you feel more inside that something there is hard, or maybe it's a little bit painful at the end, maybe you are just in front of a little stagnation, then put a very little tiny cone of moxa 
In the dispersion mode, I mean, you light the cone and you let the cone burn completely. Very tiny. You don't need too much. I'm talking about two millimeters, okay? Then if you do this one, maybe three times, not more, you break the stagnation or you begin to break the stagnation. And after it has sense that you put your cigarette there, really all the heat that you will put after will be something that the system will be profiting. If not, if you put only the cigar, the energy that you put is very quick lost on the system, out of the system. Then you want to enter on the system. Okay, break the stagnation. And after, add moxibustion in a indirect form, like cigar or like a box, okay? The five case is something that is, uh, I can say that is, is almost fake. When I say fake, it means that it doesn't exist. It cannot exist, the emptiness without stagnation. But what happens? Sometimes we palpate and we are not able to find this, the stagnation. Then we cannot do the strategy that I suggest you before. Okay. But at least if you apply some indirect techniques, well, at least you are doing something. I have to say now, now it made me think that one very common use about the cigarette that you must to know. This is a common error. And this is a physiology that explained this error, not, not me. They can, a lot of people use the cigar of moxa. They apply the stick, okay? And they wait that the zone became uh, red. Maybe you had done that. No, this is very common in a lot of schools, they explain that. And it seems that it's a sign to stop. Well, attention, when you provoke a redness on the skin, you are dispersing. You are dispersing, really. The body has a mechanism to, to send just the blow, or, or to grow the flow of blood on the surface to expel the excess of heat. Then if you want to use a cigar, a moxa cigar, in an effective way, try to control the proximity, the distance that you have with the skin, and try to to be passing evidently, because this is slower, okay? Try to get the sensation of, oh, this is heating me, this is warming me. Not the idea of, oh, it burns me. Because when you create that, you are dispersing. And you can say, oh, Philippe, what you say? It means that a oh, million of people do that and, and they are not doing good supplementation. No, 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 no. They are not doing the best way. I mean, if you do that, sure, you had put energy on the system, on the place, and you had feel the emptiness. Sure, but also you are entering in a dispersive, in a dispersive, in a dispersive mode. Then the idea that I am suggesting you is okay. Try to warm, but not enter in the dispersion if you don't want to disperse, evidently. Okay. Then I think that the, the way and the thing that you can use tomorrow morning is just when you are going to do your acupuncture, please stop, stop two seconds before put the needle and try to touch there. Try to touch the surface and experience if the surface of the point, it's hard or it's, it's weak. Or you can go inside deeper and try to to discover if something is standing inside. And if you think that you feel things, this is the moment to think, I need a needle or I need a moxa. And maybe there you will discover that a lot of times can be more useful for your passion that you use a moxa than a needle. Moxa and needles must to be together in the same level. The big problem on the current times is that people only do acupuncture and very few moxa. Then really classical voices say that. In Chinese, Zen Jiu. In Japanese, Shin Kyu. There are a binome, acupuncture and moxibustion must to be together. Then if you want, let me, let me teach you more moxibustion to balance your own Acupuncture moxibustion balance. Okay. 
then, well, Claire, Claire you asked me for do 15 minutes of questions, no, or 10 minutes of questions. Yes, I think, I think it's really, um, it's really exciting to hear about your um, your techniques and the and the palpation of where we're palpating deeply. We're feeling for stagnation. We're feeling for weakness. We're feeling for tightness, and all of that. You know, often I, I think sometimes when you come out of acupuncture school, you put your hand on a patient, and then you think, I don't know what to do with that. Um, and for sure, the tradition in Japan of treating blind practitioners has really, really taken palpation to a whole new level where there mm. really is lots of information to be gathered by that. Um, and, and then for you to be able to share your techniques as well as the skills of interpreting that is a beautiful thing. I'm very excited. Please come over sooner than September. We need you here. Um, while people are thinking of their questions, I'd like to just... Um, read very briefly. Um, Cara Conroy Lau is somebody who has trained with Philippe in Canada. And I asked her about her experiences of um, uh, attending the seminars uh, with Philippe. And she and I said, what will you be able to do that you couldn't really do before? Um, she says, you'll understand the power and history of moxa through the Japanese tradition of practice. You'll confidently know how, when, and where on the body to use Japanese moxa safely and effectively. You'll have the ability to treat all conditions that we find in a modern acupuncture clinic effectively with a non-needle method, which patients enjoy, find very relaxing, and is also a tool for patients who are adverse or too sensitive to needles, or perhaps where there is... Um, uh, areas you don't want to put a needle into. Moxa has the ability to treat certain conditions of imbalance in a person's body more effectively than needles alone. You'll be able to understand how the fascia network relates to stagnation and postural imbalances in the body and how to gently release and open these areas. You'll have the other half of the profession's toolkit. This is what Philippe was just finishing with one that has always been used alongside needles. The Chinese term that has been translated to acupuncture is, I'm going to say this really badly, Zen Ju. I'm sure that's not how you say it. Literally, needles and moxibustion. As modern acupuncture therapists, most of our training has neglected half of the therapy, but this clinical practice strengthens greatly with using both techniques. So that's from Kara, who attended in... Japan. I think um, before I just look at the chat, the burning question I have, Philippe, is which conditions are really, really jump out at you as being perfect mm -hmm. for moxa mm -hmm. and potentially difficult with needles? You talked about tendonitis as one of them, but can you expand on that? Yeah, of course, of course. You must think that that we treat all kinds of disorders, all kinds of disorders, infertility, endometriosis. Um, dizziness, stomach problems, uh, pulmonary problems, lung problems, uh, bladder problems. I mean, the application is, is equal like you can think with needling, but it's stronger. Okay, I always say that, that, that uh, to learn moxibustion, you must learn to stop. To do moxibustion is relatively easy, but the most important is to understand when you must to stop. Then what happened? For practice moxibustion, you have to develop a lot of listening of the body, a lot of signs that the body are, and the patient are, is giving to you. Okay, then really the applications are enormous. I have to say that that I love to treat gynecological disease, not only structural, also skin disorders are very very interesting and very quick that they they gone. They can. Then, indeed, all the chronic conditions are like uh, at the. It seems that the most, the most uh, strong application is this: the chronic conditions. It doesn't matter which kind of condition, okay. But uh, also in the acute situations, 
we can use moxibustion in a very fast way. And we have a lot of success with that. I think that if you are worried, if the people are worried about the time, mox is the, is the big deal, you know, because we win time. All happen faster. At the same time, if you like to treat emotional disorders, for example, is another big application of moxibustion that can help a lot. Also, moxa can offer you a lot of depth. You can go inside very, very, very deep. You can help really to unblock, to contain people. You must think that we are working with fire and fire is transformation. And this is not only an idea, this is very real. When you work with only moxibustion, every day you see people transformed. And evidently you are also transformed every day because you, you evolve with that. Okay, but this is very, very fantastic when you feel that someone is stacked, stacked. You want to help someone to continue to discover also his body, her body. Mosa can be a good, a good help for that. Thank then, you. Sorry. Are enormous. Thank you. I um, uh, uh, the other thing I wanted to say about it. I know um, Philippe has given us a lovely uh, overview today and some in-depth um, knowledge about what will happen on the seminars. But uh, the one of the things that I would really like to um, us to be able to do more in the UK is to embrace more of that apprenticeship style of learning. Um, Philippe learned in this way in Japan and, and then took that back into practice and studied and um, practiced and practiced and studied and, and then went back and learned and watched from masters, uh, from his sensei. Um, and these seminars are very practical. We will be doing the same thing. They're split into three lots of three days so that we will all be on the couch poking our N6, uh, not poking, palpating. Um, palpating uh, beautifully, not poking, although I want to lie down now and poke my REN6. Um, but we will be uh, feeling uh, each other, we will be feeling for the stagnation and the weakness that Philippe will teach us how to do that in, um, in a way that he has learned. And we will all then take that away to clinic and practice and really hone our skills in a very traditional way, which I think to some degree we... Um, uh, we could all benefit from doing a little bit more of that learning uh, uh, here. So it's it is very practical. So um, I'm sorry, I'm going to read what is in the uh, in the chat here. Thank you for your contribution. So firstly, uh, from Claire. Claire, oh, thank you, Claire. Claire says, I saw Philippe do a demo at a conference and it was the most beautiful treatment I have seen. Two of us got quite emotional watching. Had a chat after as well, and he's extremely giving with his knowledge. Somebody you warm to immediately. One of a kind. His patients are very lucky. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Claire. And Charlotte says, are there any conditions or patients you would not treat with Moxa? She suggests maybe hypertensive patients, perhaps? Yeah, we have conditions. More than conditions, situations. I think a good, a good clinician always must to understand more than to repeat only protocols. Protocols can help us, evidently, or recipes can help us, but this is one level. I prefer, for example, in my seminars always, I prefer that people understand. When you understand, you open your work really a lot. If you only learn a list of points for certain disease, well, this is, I think this is a level. But if you go, you want to go farther, you need to understand, okay? Then when we talk about conditions that are not recommended, it's more situations that are not recommended. We also, we need to understand, for example, uh, so this person who asked, asked about the, the idea of hypertension. When you have an hypertension, there is not a problem to do moxa, okay? And you must to think that you must to understand how hypertension is expressed in the body of the person. You must to think, for example, a classical idea 
or a classical treatment of Fukaya for hypertension were points that appear just on the upper body. He used it, the master only used it direct moxibustion. And what was the idea? The energy is stagnant there. Yeah, your heart is working very hard. The blood is pumping, the heart is pumping very hard, the blood. Then the blood is going up and the energy is going up. And what happened? Finally, you have a blockage there. Then we treat there to allow the energy go down. Evidently, in the same treatment, we do that, but we finish down. Why? When you finish down, you are calling all the chi that is up, that you are reducing all the risk. Then always is, a, is a, you must think that when you have an excess on the body, it means that you have a weakness on the other side. The same is when you have something hot, sure you have something cold in another place. Then evidently, if I have heat, I don't put my more heat on the heat. We have techniques, we have exceptions, we can discuss a lot. But a very useful thing is to try to find the coldness and apply most of the coldness. And we take this excess of heat and we put this heat down. Then it's more situations, evidently, when you have a patient in a crisis of hypertension, I recommend you, okay, we are going to go down with the dosage of moxa, but we can do something, but down. It will go down the energy. If you think that you are not confident still with moxa, you can use the needles a bit daily. But when we talk about someone who is not in a crisis, who suffer hypertension, could be a good tool too. But there is not a problem. As, as all the therapies, we have limits. And a good clinician must to understand the limits too. If I don't understand the limits, I, I would be a, a crazy person. And this is not the case. I try not to be a crazy person. Okay. Then I understand that we have limits. Then, for example, we're going to talk about the cancer. We never do MOSA over a tumor. It has no sense. We have also a very important rule to, to respect when we have in a in a, in a, when we are in a cancer of the third, third phase, that it means that maybe there is metastasis and very nice implications of the ganglion. We don't do moxa. Then we have limits that are very, very exact limits. And if you know, you can do things. Then I think that a good clinician must to understand more than forbidden situations, must to understand situations that are dangerous or that can complicate things. Then the good solution for that is a study. Always I say in a lot of uh, books, in the classical books, we have uh, a list of forbidden points. Sure, you listen or you studied that in the school. This is normal. And the forbidden points are for some prisms that they are forbidden. And the classical text, they try to explain these forbidden prisms. And sometimes the forbidden reasons are described in a very exact in a very exact sense. Then if you understand this sense, you understand that you can use maybe the point, but in another way. You must think that we have a lot of forbidden points in Moxibustion, in the classical voices, but really we have scholars who had to review with all the forbidden points and they say, well, the point itself is not a problem. It's how you treat the point, what you do with the point. Then I have to say something that I think is interesting to understand. When we say and we try to talk about classical use of moxibustion, you must to think that we are talking about cauterization mainly. And cauterization on the old times were, was something very hard with big burns, maybe two centimeter burn, very big. And it was the classical moxibustion. It was, was just before, in the Ming period, the Chinese developed other, other ways of doing moxibustion softer. But still in the text, sometimes we don't know what they do. Then it's very important. If you are a good practitioner or you want to be a good practitioner, it's very important that you became more exact in the descriptions of things. What I mean, if I say, this point, do moxibustion. Well, 
which moxibustion? Because direct moxibustion is very different than indirect moxibustion. The effects are pretty completely different. Then always, and this the old text not always describe exactly, they always say moxibustion. And for the reason sometimes it's forbidden. Then my recommendation is if you don't know why something is forbidden, respect and don't do it. But if you want to progress in your work, study more. Study more and you will arrive to understand why it's forbidden. And maybe in this forbidden, you can do something that is not the same and can get another effect that have not risk. Wonderful. Then please think in situations more than in conditions. Thank you, Philippe. Thank you, thank you. Very comprehensive answer. It's not black and white. Everybody's an individual. Um, Vanessa has said, I thank you, Vanessa. I am a second year student and am afraid of using Moxa in September in clinic. May I ask how you deal with the smoke and ventilation issues? Is it okay for practitioners with asthma, for example? Okay. This is this is a question that only happens on the West, I have to say. <laughs> okay. Then in Asia it doesn't happen. Well, I'm not worried about this. No, and, and I have to say that I work all the day with Moxa. On the last 13 day, 13 years of my life, I have been only doing Moxa every day. I tend to use more direct moxibustia because the styles I practice mainly are with this strategy. And, and direct moxibustion for me is a kind of complement or supplement to direct moxibustion, okay? Then, I mean, I don't suffer a problem of smoke in my clinic. If you came to my clinic, you will smell something like a very slight smell of incense because there is not a lot of smoke. We have, there are, there are techniques with a lot of smoke if you want. And if you think it can be a problem for you, then better don't use. But indeed, this is a discussion, okay? Evidently, all the substances in combustion are, have things inside that are not good. This is all the smokes of the, of the world. It doesn't matter if it's the most beautiful incense, or the most helpful fire of plastic, okay? All have burning substances inside that are not good for the body. But the question is more the level of these substances. I work in a clinic that have not a system for the air. I mean, I open windows and in my case, the flow is enough to go out the smell of the smoke. If you are worried about that, I have to say that nowadays in the market exist systems for extract the smoke that you can buy these kind of machines that you put on the side of the table and you have not smoke if you, this is your problem. But I have to say that there are a lot of different smokes. If this is only Artemisia, and this is the main herb that we use in moxibustion, and if you use Artemisia of high quality moxa, I think it is, this is not a problem. And also interesting to understand about the asthma. Okay? Then asthma is an hyperactive reaction of the bronx, of the bronchial. Okay? And there are people who activate this with cold, and there are people who activate this with smoke. This is true. Then it's try to find the level of, of exposition that you can, that you can afford. Okay, then I don't say that no problem. I have to say in my experience, I have no problem. But I understand your question. And I understand if you are worried, you must to manage only the quality of this smoke and the quantity of the smoke that you have close to you. Okay. But it's two things. I understand the person who asked that is because she has a problem about the, the lungs. The other people, I have to say that you must you think what you obtain, you put in the balance, okay, in the tilt. 
And I have to you that Moxa can offer you a lot of things more than prejudice. Sure, for your health. Thank you, thank you. I bet there are asthma shoe points that could be moxed. No, there is. I profit to give to give you. Uh, I don't like to give recipes. I say it, okay. But you know, I have a kind of list point of list of points that I love, okay. Because I think that there are points that are magnifical, okay. Then I want to give you a gift, okay, for all the people. Don't explain. This is a secret, okay. <laughs> I have a point. That it's uh, that we call the bladder 17. Bladder 17, it's a very special point, okay? Because it's a kind of point that, that is in the middle. Just it has an action, a strong action on the diaphragm. And you know the diaphragm, diaphragm, it, it's something that, that runs like, like the Dumai. Uh, sorry, like the Daimai, the circle. The diaphragm is a wall that we can open or we can close. Then this point, bladder 17, open this diaphragm. For example, a very good application for this point is the hot flashes. You have hot flashes, hot flashes, this point is fantastic. Mox at this point, unblock this point. If you have something that happens on the upper part of the body, and you see that all the energy is standing there. Do direct mox on 17, on bladder 17, and the energy goes down. Yeah? But I want to give you another little secret of that. Not always bladder 17 is stagnant. Sometimes the stagnation of bladder 17 appear half centimeter out and up. Okay, then please go to the point, the regular location. Okay, touch if you feel something there. If you don't feel anything, go a little bit up, uh, out, and up. We are talking about half centimeter, not more. Okay, and there you can find a reactive point. It means that you are just in the stagnant bladder 17. Very useful. This is one of the one I think is the first of my list. I have two more, but if you want two more, we need to see in person to explain this. And I hope to meet you in the future, okay? So is this a good point? Those people that have got those really hot red upper backs, you press their backs, it's hot, it's hot on the back of the neck, red on the back of the neck. This is bladder 17 is the palpate and bladder 17. And they fabulous, it will flow down. It's very spectacular as a point. Okay, I, I said to you, eh, I don't like too much to give recipes, but, but I have to confess that there are certain points that are very spectacular with direct mocks, uh, the effect that we can get. Fabulous, fabulous. Right, I'm going to ask two more questions. Let's see. So, Patrick, thank you. Patrick says, I'm wondering how moxa might work with sciatica. Oh. <laughs> this, is, this is fantastic. It's a very, 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 very nice tool. Yeah, I, I, I say to Patrick that uh, if he want to have a good result with Moxa with sciatica, it's interesting to to change the way of seeing the problem. What I mean? Sure, with the acupuncture idea of of sciatica. We have a strategies related to balance meridians like bladder, like liver. Okay, we have this kind of strategies. But I have to say to you that a good way to treat sciatica is to try to see the body under the idea that I commented before of stagnations of qi and shui. Okay, then I recommend you to palpate these meridians, bladder or liver, palpate these meridians and try to find these stagnations and try to treat this stagnation. Indeed, my recommendation is that you, you can begin from the, from the foot to up. It will be more pleasant for the patient, okay? 
but it's very it's very quick that you can release the, the sciatica. Evidently, there are a lot of types of sciatica or, or degrees of sciatica pain, but this idea of of treat the stagnations of GM shui with dilem oxybution is very powerful in the majority of the cases. Then please try to do this. Go to the, the channel. And also out of the channel is interesting, okay? But go to the channel and please try to go inside with palpation. Here is very difficult with the cam explain palpation, okay? Palpation must be explain it one in front of the other, okay? And, and touch and feel, okay? But we use, we tend to use the thumb to try to go inside. And still you had not practiced palpation before, this kind of palpation, I mean, don't be worried. You can go there inside and you can say, oh, Philippe, I don't know if I am over something that is interesting. Okay, no problem, change the point. Then you can find points also by comparing. Then when you find a point that is reactive and is indurated, it means that have a different density, this is the point. This is the good point for direct moxie booster, the perfect point. And so you're talking about palpation from the starting from the feet on the bladder channel. Look for look in the lower leg for the indurations and treat. I'll give a... Okay. Great. Okay, okay. Patrick. All right. Uh, Fabienne says, "How many students do you take on the course?" Ah, so, we reviewed, reviewed 20, 20 or 30, 20. Yeah, I think we said 20, you know, probably 20 maximum in terms of. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, you know, this course is, is, a, is a way. You must think that this is not a, I'm going to a seminar in, and it's done. No, 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 no. This is the beginning of a way. Then the, the course is designed like a progression. We begin from zero and we, I try to put you in 100. Okay, I mean, we will begin for the first steps and I will try that you have very clear on your mind to create something that I call the moxibustionist mind. is the way of thinking of uh, someone who uses moxibustion as a main third. Then we begin from that. Then step by step, we go farther. This is the idea. Okay, then finally, it's not a seminar. I repeat, this is the beginning of a way. Why? Because this is, a row of seminars, this is true, and can seems only done, but it's not that. You will see that after that, there are more things that if you want to improve your moxie boost and I can give to you. Then I hope that uh, the people decide, because this is a decision, always life is decision, are decisions, it's decisions. And, and when you say no to something, you don't know, but mainly you are losing an opportunity. Then give you the opportunity to learn more about something that can open your, your world of therapy. And I hope that uh, it changed my life. And I have to promise you, I, I, I am a testimony of that. Okay, and I try that people experience the same, how they can change their life with Moxa, but also the life of their patients. We cannot imagine how we can help, who can improve our help to the patients that suffer. Thank you, Philippe. Thank you. Thanks. I've got one last question, I think, from Andre. Andre asks, um, will we have videos or can we record the techniques being taught during the course? Well, I pray that I pray that this is a question of respect for yourself, not for me. Okay. Because uh, sure, the people who will come to the seminar, they will do an effort, an effort of time, an effort of maybe lifetime to families or other things, maybe the, the clinic, and also an effort of money. I mean, you will do a lot of efforts. And for a question of respect yourself, I recommend that I have no problem that people do a photo or maybe do a video, okay? But keep it for you. Keep it for you because you will do the, the one who will do a big effort. Then this is one thing. Another thing is that the, there are people in the seminar. Then, for respect to the others, take care of what you are filming. Ask to the others. 
The only thing that I don't 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 like is that people try to to record all the seminar. It has not sense. Indeed, the 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 big deal and the big stuff here is to experience this way. Uh, still, you see a video, you will not understand. Is when you feel what happened with this moxa cone that maybe you had not done right, or maybe you arrived to the skill enough to do very right. This feeling is a success because then you understand what you can do with the passion and how you must to do to have a very comfortable treatment, a very effective treatment. I mean, the, the good stuff here is the experience. Then I don't have problem if you do a video or you do a photo. I try to be very handsome, okay? <laughs> but, but the good stuff is experience, okay? Then please come for experience. And if I have to repeat you three times the same, in case, because I am not able to express in, in, enough, or I have not the words, I will try to do my best, trying to find other words for you, okay? then don't be worried about, I will not understand, or maybe Philip said, and I don't know what he said. I repeat for you, okay? No problem. I am here for that. Thank you, Philip. Thank you. In the true sense of sensei, he will be there for us. Um, Fabienne, last question. Fabienne has said, where is the course taking place in London? Fabienne, it's very central. It is in Camden, in the Acumedic uh, Center. So it's, um, it's very central, Camden High Street. Uh, any last questions? No? Then um, we have come together as acupuncturists today and I'm feeling very excited about soon we would come together as moxibustionists. Um, it's a beautiful thing and uh, I thank you Philippe for taking the time to share your passion and um, I, I'm very I'm very excited about the fact that we will be having a real master come to the UK, share his mastery, and we will be his apprentices and learn those techniques and join that path to, to mastery also together. Um, it's a very wonderful thing. So thank you all of us. Lovely to see all of you this evening. Really lovely. Thanks for your time and your energy and your enthusiasm. Uh, if you have any questions at all, you know when you signed up on the registration form, there's uh, the email address, admin at aac-org.uk. I'm very, get in touch that way. I'm very happy to call anybody um, if you'd like a conversation. Uh, but otherwise, I'll wish you all a wonderful evening. Uh, let, let, me, let me say something. Please do. Yeah, yeah, it's only that remember two things, please. This is a course for me a better acupuncturist. Remember, this is moxa, but this is for improve your practice. And the other thing is, please be moxa and be kind. Thank you <laughs> to everybody to be here today. Thank you, Philippe. Thank you, everybody. Everybody says thank you. Really interesting. Thank you. Thank you, Stacy. Thank you, Andre. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Claire. Thank you, Patty. I'm going to stop recording.